clearly defined destination in mind. I'd rather just set out and stop when I find something that looks interesting. And if I stumble upon something that fascinates me, sometimes it feels a little bit like I'm the first person to discover it. This was one of those times. I was driving along the base of the Lost River Range, which is southeast of Chalice, Idaho. The Lost River Range is home to Idaho's tallest peak called Bora Peak. At the base of the range, I could see an obvious lineation that extended for miles. As a geologist, I could tell that these were fault scarps. I set up camp near one of the scarps and took drone footage and hiked around to explore it. I later did a little research and discovered that this was the epicenter of a major earthquake in 1983. It was about 8 a.m. and a magnitude 6.9 earthquake hit the nearby town of Chalice. Two school children were waiting to cross the road when the quake hit, and they were killed when a building behind them collapsed. The quake lasted 30 to 60 seconds and was felt in eight states and two Canadian provinces. It was the most violent earthquake in the lower 48 in over 20 years. It was fortunate that the area around the epicenter was sparsely populated, or there otherwise would have been many more deaths. The quake occurred along the Lost River Fault, which is an 80-mile southwest-facing normal fault along the southwestern base of the Lost River Range. And here, if you look, this is, you know, 15 feet or so. Um, although the, the total throw or the vertical offset of distance the fault moved was like 10 feet, so this Scarp can be seen from the highway down there for miles and miles. I don't know, it's like a 20 mile um, section where you can see that there's been some um, offset. I'm gonna camp up here tonight and I'm gonna, <laughs> just for kicks, and see if we, I can see the offset in the outcrops here because there's there might be some interesting features up in there. But um, if I get ambitious after I set up a camp, I might go check that out. I think it's important to point out the relationship between earthquakes and faults. So as you can see from this diagram here, this is the fault plane. And earthquakes occur when movement along fracture planes in the Earth's crust get kind of, you know, bound up or held up on these irregularities in the, in the fracture. So you can imagine this stress kind of building up and building up, and the movement of the fault is kind of, say, stuck on this little you know, um, you know, bump here. And so it builds up and builds up until finally it releases all at once and then sends these shock waves out in, in all directions. So everybody's probably heard of the term epicenter and probably know that the epicenter is the, you know, plan map location of the earthquake. And that's really just the vertical projection of the seismic event at the Earth's surface. Um, so you'll you know, you've heard of epicenter, and there's also um, the focus or hypocenter, which is really just the location of the of the event along the, the fault plane. I mentioned fault scarp. This is just kind of showing the anatomy of this type of fault that exists here. The Lost River Fault is what they call a normal fault, and it's called normal not because there are abnormal faults. It's because um, it's the most common type of fault. So you can see from this diagram how um, you've got extension here. So the, the Earth's crust is kind of pulling apart here. You can just see based on this, you know, based on the movement here, that this block is moving down along this fault plane. You can see how it would be just um, the effects of gravity that could cause this block to slide down something in this, uh, you know, a plane at this angle. Uh, don't want to spend too much time on the different fault types. There are only, you know, three major ones. Um, so just briefly, the reverse fault, instead of having extension here, it would have compression. So um, the Earth's crust would be, you know, in compression here, and that would cause this fault block to move. Instead of moving down in that uh, in normal fault case, this would be kind of pushed up along this um, fault plane here. And then the last uh, type of fault, um, the strike-slip fault, instead of having um, vertical movement up and down, um, it would be a horizontal uh, movement. So that strike-slip fault 
um, type would be like this block would be moving in this direction, for example, and this block would be moving in the, in that direction. And that type of um, a, a fault is is um, kind of well known because the San Andreas is that type of fault. It's the um, strike slip fault. So getting back to the Lost River fault, this is the um, normal fault. And I mentioned fault scarp, and you can see what the fault scarp is. I think I mentioned in the field that it's the surface expression of the fault, and you can kind of see what I mean. It's just, this is part of the fault here. When this block moves down a certain um, distance, and it reveals this scarp here. It just looks like a, you know, a bank of some sort. And then I, I mentioned um, fault throw. Uh, again, we don't need to get into all this. Let me just zoom into uh, this over here. I was mentioning uh, fault throw, and throw is the vertical distance the two blocks moved in, in, um, in a relation to each other. So just really this distance here where this block had moved relative to the other block. Um, in the case of the Lost River Fault, it, at the moment of that earthquake, it moved like um, 10 feet. And it's important to recognize that just occurred at, at the instant of the of the earthquake. So it's impressive to think about, but that the entire throw along that fault is something like two and a half miles over its lifespan. So it's been doing this for millions of years. And like I said, two and a half mile uh, throw is, is um, what has been... Um, calculated uh, over the lifetime of the uh, fault. And then, not to further complicate things, but just to show the general structure over this area, it's called horse and graben structure. And a horse, as you can see, is this upthrown block, and the graben is the downthrown block. But you can see how all of these are normal faults. As extension is occurring in this direction, so remember, oops, it's a horrible arrow. <laughs> But you get the point. My mousing skills are somewhat limited, apparently, at the moment. So as, as the extension uh, occurs, you can see how these blocks would drop down. Um, so horse and grab and structure is kind of the the um, overall uh, structure, although it's even more complicated than that. There's even um, reverse faulting or thrust faulting in certain areas. So it's this is really an oversimplification, but I just wanted to explain the terms horse and grab and but the best way to view this feature is from above. It gives you a much better perspective of the scale of this thing.